Hey, my happy shiny puppies, this is Melody Fletcher, your go-to for everything law of attraction and reality creation. And today I've got a treat for you. What follows is an excerpt from one of our live Q&A calls where people just like you, students just like you, were able to ask me questions and I answered them. And today you're gonna to get one of those. And as you see in the coming weeks, we're gonna be rolling out more and more of these. And if you'd like the chance to be a part of one of these Q&A calls for free, then stay to the end of the video and I'm gonna tell you exactly how to do that. All right, I'll see you on the other side. Bye. So the big question is this. How do we, those of us who feel deep down that we're much more powerful than we've been led to believe, and that there is something to this law of attraction stuff, actually create our own realities? What's the process of simply stepping into the reality of our choice? What about those of us who need this process to make logical, intellectual sense? My name is Melody Fletcher. You've got questions about the technology of reality? and I've got the answers. Welcome to my channel where the law of attraction finally makes some freaking sense. There. Yeah, say hi, sweetheart. I haven't seen you in hey. ages. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know. You know, all these questions are really great and it kind of is answering my question. So um, hopefully this will still have some substance. So I really love traveling, as you probably know, and I did a lot earlier this year, and then I kind of started panicking, like, oh my gosh, I don't have any funds left, and let me focus on making money. So the rest of this year, I've been really in that and mode, and I've been squeaking by, you know, it hasn't been like, you know, it's been okay, it hasn't been like, wow, I'm raking in the dough. Um, so it's kind of hard for me to feel like I'm ready to go back to um, you know, traveling again, which is really, really, really what I want to do, even though I don't really totally understand why I want to do it. Like, I know I want to meet people from other cultures and know their stories and stuff like that, but it's not clear to me yet. And I'm just kind of, oh, what's the exact question? It's kind of like, um, will it kind of like just happen when it's supposed to, or is there something that I need to do to really push myself into that? I, I think I already know the answer, but. <laughs> I think you just gave yourself your answer right there. Yeah, if you're ever asking, do I should, what do I need to do? Do I need to push into this? No, no, definitely not. Yeah, you never wanna push anything. You never wanna force anything and you don't need to. And it's really the long, slow, hard way of doing things and it will be less and less supported, which means it'll become more and more uncomfortable faster and faster. Yeah, where you're like, okay, this is just isn't working, like right straight away. Yeah, I can't force myself to push. Um, and so will it happen? Yes, but that's also not a satisfying fine answer because then it's like, well, when? How long do I have to wait? How long is it going to take? You know, right. am I just supposed to sit around and do nothing? I don't get it. And so what you want to really look for is that you are not making money responsible for your ability to travel. That is putting, you know, one manifestation in front of another that you know that when you activate the frequency of what you want, whatever needs to come in to bring that about will, which includes money. But if you focus on the money, oh, I can't do this until I have money, now you're putting it in the way. Instead of saying, yeah, the money will be part of it, but I don't need to worry about that because that's not, that's a how, that doesn't have anything to do with me, right? Uh. We're always pretty really careful with money because we do tend to do that with money. I need to get the money so that I can, yeah? Or we mm. want just in case money. We don't even have a manifestation. We just want just in case money. You know, I want money in the bank just in case something happens or just in case I want something, right? right? That very rarely works either. Yeah. And not you can have extra money. It doesn't mean you can't have money in the bank, but not that way. So what you want to do is you want to focus on the feeling of, of traveling, you know, maybe build that out a little bit more, kind of figure out what specifically feels so great to you about that. And then I would look for, actually look for the ways in which it's starting to come into your reality now, which will be much subtler, which probably won't be trips and, you know, that might already be coming in, you know, but where you get that flavor, you know, uh, uh, through maybe smaller ways and ways that you hadn't even thought of, you know, you, you don't know why you're not traveling in this moment, but let's assume that it's for a good reason. Maybe you're stabilizing. Maybe there's something that's going to hit you that you need to clear. Maybe, you know, there's something that you're going to learn or something that you're going to discover. Oh, I thought I wanted this. I actually want slightly different angle that, you know, it's refined a bit, but it's, it's, it's for you because it always is. Yeah. But also so that you don't get dissatisfied waiting for the travel, 
you start to bring that energy into your life more and more as you can, which also helps to really strengthen and speed up the progression, right? And so you might be inspired to get something for your home that is really travel-y, for example. So every time you walk by it, you're like, oh my God, and it elicits that feeling, right? You might decide to throw a party where everybody comes from a different country, where you're like, yeah, bring it in. And, and you know, you can invite foreign friends, but even if they're not foreign, they got to dress like, you know, they are and maybe learn a little bit something about their country. So when somebody asks them like, oh, you're from Ecuador, what's in Ecuador? And they're not like, I don't know. They're like, oh, actually we have banana exports or whatever. You could do it like that and make it really fun so that people, I mean, not racist, obviously, but they kind of learn a little bit something about a different culture and maybe share that with each other. And maybe they have to bring a dish for them. I don't know. Or you do a theme of a different country every month and everyone knows Lisa's parties are legendary because... <laughs> this time we're doing Mexico and now we're doing Singapore. I don't know what the Singaporeans eat. She figured it out, right? Mm -hmm. And you kind of share those cultures with your friends. Maybe some of the ones that you've visited where you learned some things and you're like, did you know that they did that? So, you know, if you go to Japan and you experience a tea ceremony, maybe you want to show somebody a tea ceremony and you get some really good matcha, like the, the really good stuff, not the, the brown orangey crap, the, like the bright green one, right? And they may have never experienced that and they're like, oh, this is really special, right? You, you know, you, you can already bring more of that, your love of cultures in to where you are now. If there's a museum exhibit on different, you go to that, yeah, and, and bring some of that energy into your life in a really fun way. And that will also keep you from getting too impatient about where's the big trip, where's the big trip, where's the big trip. So the last three years, I haven't traveled at all. And I've traveled heavily before that. And, and I mean, and not at all, but like just within the United States, I've traveled, just like for conferences and stuff, not for like, oh, I'm going to go here for a week and just see what I see. And in a conference, you know, you don't see anything. You're in the hotel. And even though that gets me together with all kinds of people and it's always really fun for me, it's not the same as traveling. And vacationing is not the same as traveling. I know you know what I mean, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I've, that's what would need it to happen, though. Because if I look at the last few years and what unfolded and everything that I created, I couldn't have done that if I was traveling all the time. It would have been really stressful. It was hard enough as it was. I kind of kicked my ass a couple times, but uh, that's what needed to happen. And now next year, I'm already booking trips galore. Like it's just opening up and the universe went, and here's your passport back. Now go out into the world. And I'm like, yes, woo, right? But that needed to happen. And so sometimes we need that downtime. Even those of us who love to travel, we need to kind of stay put for a little while to let some shit come together. Yeah, that needs to happen that often isn't clear until um, until hindsight. Mm -hmm. Does that yes. make sense? Yes, it does. And it's kind of funny because um, yesterday I got as a Christmas present from my mom. It's this uh, Lonely Planet um, travel book. It's got like every country in the world. And I had thought about that the other day. I was like, oh, I used to have it, but now I don't have it. And it would be cool. And then my mom sent it to me. Bam. <laughs> yeah. I don't really feel like there's anything going wrong. I feel like you're, 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 you've been put into the timeout chair for a little while okay. uh, and not as punishment as a, you need to sit down for a second and let something happen. Right. Okay. Yeah? Not as a, Oh, you don't get to travel anymore because you have resistance to it. It's not like that. It's just something needs to happen and nothing's going wrong here at all. And I think that if you look for the signs, the universe will absolutely show you that, that you're absolutely still very supported. Nothing is going wrong here. It's just like you don't fully understand. So it's like you're at Disneyland and you want to run into and your mom's like, no, wait a minute. We got to pay. And you're like, I don't need to pay. I'm, no, this, we have to stand in line. And no, I just want to run in there. It's like, oh, no, but why can't I just do it now? Well, you just give it five minutes. You know, <laughs> it's more right. like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Helpful? Oh, yes. Yes. Thank you so much, Melody. Appreciate you're it. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. Great talking to you again. <laughs> Look at you, you made it all the way to the end of the video. Good for you. So if you'd like a chance to be part of these Q&A calls that we do for free, then all you have to do is get onto my email list. People on my email list get free gifts like this. In fact, I'll even give you another free gift for getting onto my email list, which changes periodically. So I'm not gonna tell you what it is so that I can change it, but just check the description down below, get onto my email list, get your valuable free gift, and you will be invited to take part of one of these Q&A calls yourself where you can ask me whatever you want. Sound like a good deal? I think so. So sign up now, get invited to Q&A call and get your own answers. Until then, enjoy the videos every week. Thank you for bringing your light to the world.
Bye.